Bertrand Russell, a famous British philosopher, wrote a book um, some years ago now called Why I'm Not a Christian. And I remember when I was a young boy coming across that book, a, a teenage boy, uh, coming across that book and reading the early part of it where he talked some about his childhood and why he came to reject belief in God and uh, came to reject the Christian faith. And uh, that question is the one that I'd like to reflect on a little bit uh, today uh, for a few minutes, and that is, uh, why would I be a Christian, or why be a Christian? What good reasons are there to be a Christian? As I sat down and just thought about this and started listing off some reasons, uh, I started thinking that, that this would have to be a multi-part uh, reflection because there are so many reasons that I would want to offer someone for being a Christian. Um, you know, in my own experience, when I think back in my own life, uh, I remember at least the first time that I recall hearing anything about Jesus, which of course the Christian faith centers around Jesus. I remember the first time I ever heard anything about Jesus. It was at a little uh, church that was uh, uh, a few miles away or maybe a mile or so away from the house that I lived in. And I went there as a young boy, maybe uh, uh, six, seven years old, something like that, maybe seven or eight years old. I was in about second grade, I guess, third grade maybe. And I remember going to that church and uh, the, they had a uh, a youth program or a, a, a children program, and they would have uh, presentations, usually puppet shows or uh, some captivating type of thing for kids. And in that presentation, they would they would share the simple story of God's love for us as human beings. Uh, yes, we've sinned, we've turned away from God, we've done things that are displeasing to God, but God loves us. And in fact, He loves us so much that He sent His Son into the world who died for our sins. And I remember as a boy uh, thinking about that and reflecting on that, I would go home and um, you know, sort of lay in my bed at night and wonder, what does this mean that God loves me? And I, I guess in retrospect, thinking back on it, uh, I really was kind of tormented by the question. It, maybe torment isn't a good word. I was just deeply unsettled by the question, uh, uh, but yet strangely drawn to the Christian story. And there was something about it that was so powerfully attractive. The idea that there is a God who made everything, uh, the God that I depend on every moment for everything that I am, that God loves me and, uh, and proved it in time and space and history about 2,000 years ago by clothing himself with human nature, by taking to himself a real humanity who lived among us and who suffered and died and rose again from the dead. And somehow through that collection of events and through that moment in time, God has proven his love for the world and, uh, and sown into the world or brought into the world uh, the power of, of divine love that will eventually transform this world uh, and, uh, and bring about the, the ultimate realization of the kingdom of God. But those ideas presented to me as a, as a young boy really drew me and really captivated me. And in retrospect, just thinking back about that experience uh, and, and how it has stayed with me through all the years of my life, other interests have come and gone, uh, various things have come and gone through the years, uh, but my interest and my love for the, for the story of Jesus, uh, God's love proven to, to us through Jesus, has never wavered. I, don't, I can't think of any moment in my life where I thought, ah, that's not interesting anymore, or that's not something worth uh, believing anymore. It's the very core and the very center of my life. And I think that's the first reason I would offer for why uh, I would encourage one to consider being a Christian. And that is because Christianity offers to us a relationship of love. Uh, and that is precisely what it is. Believing in Jesus is not like believing 2 plus 2 equals 4 or something like that. Uh, believing in Jesus is a, a, um, a personal interaction or a personal openness to God's love for us as human beings. I described it the other day this way, and I know I got this from someone else, and, and, and in fact I hear it from time to time, but I like to think of it like this, that, that human beings have a great big hole inside of us that is an opening or a place where only God uh, can fill it or satisfy it. Uh, and because we have this great big hole inside of us, until we receive God and His love and we're united together with God in love, uh, we're always going to be unfulfilled on some level. We're, we're not going to be totally and completely happy or totally and completely happy or fulfilled. There's going to be something yet there that we're, we're restless about. Um, and so what the, the Christian faith says is that that great big void in the human heart, that desire for fulfillment and completion, can only be satisfied in relationship with God. 
But that relationship that God wants to have with us as human beings is one that we have to enter into freely. And so what God has done through Jesus is he's come and dwelt among us and essentially told us through the life and actions and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus and his teachings, he tells us that he loves us. And he invites our response. And so responding to Jesus and responding to the Christian faith is almost like the experience of choosing to love someone. It's not like going to a math class or going to a science class. It's a different kind of experience. It's the experience of responding to love. So Jesus is God coming into the world and saying, I love you, and inviting us into a response to him. Now, once I come to believe in Jesus, once I come to have this openness to him, I find in my own life, and, and you, you can try it out for yourself, but I find in my own life that my belief in Jesus gives to me a framework or a context in which to understand everything else about my life, to explain my deepest desires, to explain uh, the, the principles by which I want to live my life. Uh, in Jesus, I find the supreme example of how I want to live and, and the kind of love that I want to develop in my own life. I find in Jesus an understanding of God, of myself, of the world, of human beings, an optimistic outlook on life. Uh, optimistic in this sense that because of Jesus, because of God's love shown to us in Jesus, we know that life has a meaning, that it's going somewhere. The resurrection of Jesus, for example, tells us that life will triumph over death, that the resurrection of Jesus is a foretaste of our own future. If I really believe in Jesus, then I have an incredibly optimistic view of life. Also, if I really believe in Jesus, it, it gives me a, a model or example of how to love and how to try to look beyond even the, the, the faults and the failures and even the wickednesses that we see in this world. Because of Jesus, we find that God is out searching for human beings, looking for human beings to bring them back home to himself. Like Jesus tells the parable of the, of the, uh, uh, the lost sheep where the... Uh, the shepherd leaves the 99 to go find the one and bring him back home. Uh, that idea that God has come to seek after the lost, I think is, is the beautiful truth of the Christian faith that all of us on some level, I think, can relate to. The need or the desire that God find us and bring us back home to himself. I find the Christian faith profoundly enriching and profoundly fulfilling. Now you might say, well, you, you, you fall in love with Jesus, but you might be falling in love with a figment of your imagination. Uh, or you may be uh, just, maybe it does you some good, uh, but maybe it's not objectively true. And of course, I could give and spend some time talking about, you know, what we sometimes call motives of credibility, uh, things that, uh, uh, that we see sort of uh, historical observations or philosophical observations that lead us to have confidence that our act of faith in Jesus, our belief in a God who loves us, is well-founded. So there are other arguments that can be presented. But I think at, at the core of our belief is not a series of arguments but rather it is a response to love. God has loved us, and we respond to that love. And I find that because I have responded to Jesus that way, it, it totally enriches and empowers and transforms the way that I look at the world. So much so, I had, and I'll finish with this, I had an atheist uh, friend uh, some time back ask me, uh, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow, or how would your life be different tomorrow if you woke up and you found out that everything you believe is false? If you found out that Jesus was not who he claimed to be and there was objective evidence that proved that that was so, uh, what would you do? Now, the point he was trying to make is that my life would be very little different. Uh, what he was trying to say is that your belief system is really just sort of hovering over real life. And real life doesn't involve any kind of appeal to God or any kind of... Uh, uh, you know, belief system that, that is it, it wrapped up with everything that you do each day. And my response was quite the opposite, uh, that, that what I believe and my, my belief in Jesus is something that, in, that affects everything that I am. It affects how I view life, how it affects how I view other people, it affects how I view my future, it affects me, how I view my family, it affects everything about my life uh, to, to know that there's a God who loves us and sent his son to be the savior of the world. That totally transforms everyday life and the way I think about uh, everything. Uh, so 
why be a Christian? Well, I believe because uh, it is the most beautiful message, the message of God's love for us as human beings, and that it's worth opening yourself to it. And I think what you'll find is a worldview, a way of looking at everything uh, that is the most beautiful story ever told, and I believe that it's true.